Hey everybody, this is John, or JDent02, back with another Renderman for Blender video. This time I'm going to be tackling the wide, wonderful world of getting the smoke simulation to render. Um, there have been a lot of questions about it, a lot of confusion over exactly how you get it to render out, and it is, it is a little unintuitive, but at the same time, when Blender first got its smoke simulator, trying to render there and then also when rendering in cycles was pretty unintuitive too. And then, you know, over time it just got easier as we got used to the steps. And it's pretty much the same with this. Uh, once they're explaining it, it'll be kind of like a, you know, hit yourself over the head. Oh, I get it moment. So anyway, I'm going to help you hit yourselves over the head, so to speak. So we'll start out with our base scene and we need to obviously go and enable our render man because I can't do any of my homework beforehand. And we start out with our default scene. We got the cube, which we'll just go ahead and use as our domain. So we'll get that a little bit bigger, bring it up a bit, and then we'll do the first of this essential steps to get the smoke sim to work, and that is to apply the scale that we just put on the domain. Uh, if we don't do that, the simulation is going to look wonky as all get out, and it may not even work. Um, so once again, to apply it, you just go Control A and Scale. So now our box is properly scaled. We'll just delete that light for right now. Turn that to that so we can see what we're doing. And the second part is to add the emitter as usual. So we'll just do a you know boring old plane here. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. And uh, now we'll do an interesting third step that I've found you have to do. So you actually have to put the origin of the domain wherever the smoke is coming from. Now why that is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's just a quirk in RenderMan or maybe a quirk in the caching system, but um, if you put the origin of the box, if you leave it here, you can run the smoke sim and you'll notice that any smoke that emits from the plane actually emits from here, about halfway up the box. Looks kind of weird. So to fix that, we select this, do Shift S, cursor to selected, and now we go into our domain, and then we do origin, set origin to 3D cursor. As I kind of uh, cu a couple extra steps, you don't have to take these steps when you're using Cycles or Blender. You do with RenderMan. Don't know why, just the way it is. So now we got all this lined up properly. We can do what we normally do. We go over to Smoke, assign the square as a domain. Take the plane, assign it as a flow. It can hit Animate, and there's our smoke. Just rising, rising, nothing too fancy. So let's fix that. First off, let's uh, let's get a light in there so we can actually kind of see what this is doing. So we'll just put an area light, nothing, nothing too fancy. Doesn't have to be really dramatic. We just want to illuminate our smoke and actually see what it's doing. This is probably not the right way to orient a light, but you know whatever, it gets the job done. We'll add that, maybe increase the size a bit. Sorry if I'm just kind of burning through this, this is just kind of RenderMan 101 type stuff and you know, it doesn't really need to be gone over here. So apologize if anybody's left in the lurch. So now we got a light. We've got our smoke sim. If we go over to our domain, uh, adaptive domain does work with RenderMan, which is really nice because that'll save you some space on your files if you have a small part of this domain that's actually filled with smoke. So always suggest using that. High resolution does work as well. So you click that and what that will do is it'll actually refine whatever smoke simulation you have. So like if I if I turn that off and run it, you can see that it's kind of wispy, kind of ugly, it bands a lot, you know, not a very detailed simulation. If I turn on high resolution, it'll keep that same basic smoke motion, but it'll just add a lot more detail to it. Now you can kind of see this little, let's kind of zoom in there, that little square. That's the size of uh, what they call a voxel, a little chunk of 3D space that it saves smoke data. With high resolution off, it's that big. With it on, it's that big. So, you know, you turn that up. I mean, I usually use two or three, but that takes a lot longer to render. So for today, I'm just going to do one. Then we come down to the cache parts. As always, you actually need to save your Blender file before this becomes open. 
And here's another important thing as far as rendering smoke. There's two different caching systems available to you. There's an older Blender Point cache, and then there's the newer OpenVDB. Now this came in, I believe, in 2.77. And um, with the older Point cache, um, it works. It will export to RenderMan, and it does render decently as long as you don't use high resolution. If you use high resolution, you're going to see your export times just skyrocket through the roof and, you know, basically you'll never you'll never finish. Um, I tried to export just a basic animation with two divisions and after a half an hour it hadn't even finished one frame of export, so I kind of killed it and swore never to use it again. Uh, so point is the point cache is not the way to go. OpenVDB is. OpenVDB is much, much better. So we'll just uh, say 72 there for the end because we don't want to sit here forever and we don't really need to. So we've got OpenVDB selected as the caching system. We bake all dynamics. We watch the bar scroll. Can continue to scroll. And it's done. Always save just in case something goes catastrophically wrong. Animate. And now there's our new smoke. You can see it's a little bit more detailed. Not, not terribly so but you know just just enough so if you watch that in a loop you can see that the caching did work so great you know we got a we got a smoke simulation that's all that's all good and fine so how do we render it well let's make sure we got our camera lined up first here so we can see something when we actually do render it what we want to do is just like cycles we want to select the domain and we want to change this Pixar surface to a Pixar volume that is the main node that we'll use for rendering any volumes whether it's a heterogeneous or a homogeneous this is this is the node to use so the, the most simple and straightforward way of getting smoke simulation data to render is to go to the density float box just type in density that's all it takes so now if we render we will wait a moment for it to start up preloading the uh, smoke simulation data usually takes just a, a few seconds a little bit of time um, I'll actually show you a way of oh guess it's interrupting my speech there's our smoke simulation and you know it's working as you can see, it's not all that exciting though. It's kind of kind of thin, kind of wispy, not too uh, not too interesting. And the reason for that is, is because with the base smoke simulator, you can only export up to one on the density scale. That's not very dense. Um, and unfortunately, the smoke simulator doesn't allow you to generate values any higher than that. So if you want to get thicker smoke, you actually have to modify the simulation data. And you can't do that with this. This is, you know, according to Pixar, this is the quickest way to render smoke, but it's the least versatile as far as options. You basically have none. So to modify the smoke data, we got to add in a couple more nodes, and we have to use a slightly different system. So I'm just going to delete that and get this density float to come back up. And then we are going to add a Pixar Primvar node. And now what that will do is, once again, we'll type in density. We'll leave it as float. And for coordinate system, I'm going to type in object. I don't know if you really need to do that, but it's just kind of a habit I've gotten into, and it works, so I don't see any reason not to. And um, so then we take the color ramp, add that here, and we will take the float output and route it into the spline map. And then, uh, being that the float is a black and white value, and it's a black and white value here, you can take any of these three outputs, don't take the RGB, take one of these three outputs, doesn't matter which one, and plug it into density float. Now, if we were to render right now, you'd get the exact same results as before. So we don't want to do that. We want to try to make it a little bit denser. The way to do that is to come up here to the high end. You can see it's only at 1. Let's change that to 7, say. So now we got a maximum density of 7. Now, 
if we click on that, we'll sit here and we'll twiddle our thumbs for about another five seconds or so. And we will wait. Always takes, there we go. And right away, you can see that the smoke is now a decent, a decent noticeably amount denser than it used to be before. The overall simulation is still pretty weak. Uh, it's not very detailed, so no matter what you do, you're not going to get a whole lot of detail in this cloud. But as you can see, it's a lot denser. And that's good. So that's how we modify the smoke data to get denser smoke. And um, actually, I just realized one thing that I forgot to do is on the volume, when you go into density, there's actually a column called max density. And what that is is how the highest density you're going to get in the volume. And so we left it at 1. It shouldn't have done that. Being that now it has a maximum of 7, we need to change that to 7. And the reason being is that actually has something to do with how RenderMan calculates the sampling that it needs to do on that volume. So if you leave it at 1, um, it potentially doesn't sample the volume well enough. So we'll start that back up. And, as you've seen before, we will wait for the pre-processing pre to begin. Like I said, I'll show you a quick way around this here in a little bit. There we go. Actually, I <laughs> kind of uh, negated what I said before. As we can see, the smoke is now significantly more detailed because we turned the maximum density up just fine. And it's also quite a bit thicker. So, long story short, that's how you modify your smoke data. And as far as adding flame, um, I didn't render the smoke sim out with flame, so it wouldn't really work that way. But what we can do is maybe create some fake flame. There it is. I can never seem to remember where I am sometimes. So we'll put that here. We'll route this in again to the spline map. And this time we'll take the RGB and we'll put it into the emit color. And now this probably is not going to look all that good. I'm just kind of making it up off the top of my head. Maybe change this to a nice yellow color. And now, if we start our IPR, uh, it goes without saying, once again, we'll just kind of wait a little bit here. And there, we can see little hints of yellow emission within the cloud where it's denser. And so that's how you work with flame. Um, you don't, you'd have to add another Pixar primvar and you'd have to type in flame and leave everything else the same. And then you can work with the flame numbers separately and tie it into that emit color. And so that's, that's pretty much how you get your cycles and blender smoke simulations and flame simulations rendered out into RenderMan. You know, it's, like I said, it's, it's more or less the same process, just everything's titled a little bit differently. And what I was saying about how to uh, speed up your rendering a little bit, this is um, kind of an advanced concept, but there's a number of things called dicing strategies that are used by RenderMan. And that, long story short, it um, has to do with how it renders details on objects. And there's a couple of different strategies that it uses. The default is actually planar projection, which is all good and fine. Um, but it doesn't work necessarily the best with volumes, especially larger volumes such as this. So what you should actually do is you should actually use spherical projection if at all possible. And another thing you can do is you can go into the object properties for the domain, and you can go down to ray tracing is not ray tracing, it is shading and visibility, sorry, override the default shading rate and actually turn this right here up to say f 10 even. Because what that's going to do is smoke data is never as detailed as a surface. It's, n it's not going to be. It's more of a wispy in any way. And so you don't need the amount of detail on the um, the tessellation that RenderMan does is you don't need it on volumes. And so what you're basically doing with this is you're telling the renderer, I only need it to be this detail. The higher the number, the less detail. And what that'll do is it'll spend less time 
chopping the box up when it first starts rendering. So the combination of spherical projection and turning this micro polygon length up will actually make your render start much, much faster. So let's actually do a fresh thing here. So you remember how long it took before? Well, if you try it now, boom! right there just almost instantly it starts rendering so that's a really nice trick to use um, like I said the spherical projection options are bleeding edge and they are not quite in the master branch yet um, I'm recording this on Sunday December what is today December 4th and so within a few days it should be available in master um, I'd always recommend whenever you try to mess with blender for RenderMan or RenderMan for Blender that you always check to see if the master branch has been updated. It gets updated a lot and a lot of the times it's updated for a good reason. So like I said, uh, take a day or two to wait and then go and check if these options got put in there. It'll help enormously for volume rendering. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. You know, obviously there's a lot more nuance and there's a lot more uh, detail that's you know covers rendering out volumes but that's for a different day and a lot more time to experiment this is just kind of a, a quick thing to get you up and working with um, smoke simulations in RenderMan. So once again this is John I hope you enjoyed this video um, I actually have no idea what I'm gonna do for my next one so you'll be just as surprised as I am when it pops up. Thanks!